Dear viewers, have you ever seen the images of our solar system floating around the internet? The sun, seemingly just a tad larger than Jupiter. But let's shatter that illusion. Our sun is so colossal that it could swallow about 1,000 Jupiter. Yet, in the grand cosmic scale, our sun is a speck. A the crown for the largest star in the universe, our galaxy, goes to UI Scuti. In comparison, our sun is merely a grain of sand. But hold on, the cosmos has more surprises in store. Scientists have discovered something even more astonishing, a cryptic ancient star harboring a black hole within. This celestial enigma not only baffles scientists but also holds clues to understanding the universe's evolution. You might wonder, how can a black hole exist inside a star? Why were these stars so colossal? And what would be the aftermath of such a black hole star straying into our solar system? Stars, the cosmic blacksmiths, forge most of the elements we observe in the universe in their blazing cores. However, the stars that could have existed at the dawn of the universe were a different breed. Instead of conventional stellar cores, they nurtured black holes within, enabling them to grow to unfathomable sizes. Ordinary stars are born from the collapse of the densest gas and dust cloud regions under gravity's pull. The resulting mass of material heats up, forming a protostar, a star in its infancy. Eventually, the hot core gathers enough matter from the surrounding gas disk, transforming into a main-sequence star that generates energy through nuclear fusion. Our sun took about 50 million years to reach this phase. Most stars will spend the majority of their lives as main-sequence stars, but ultimately, they will either shrink into white dwarfs if their mass is insufficient, or explode in a supernova. The aftermath of such a stellar explosion could either be a black hole or a neutron star, depending on the star's mass. Our sun in about 5 billion years will exhaust its hydrogen fuel. It will then transform into a red giant, ballooning to 200 times its current size. Eventually it will shed its outer layers and morph into a white dwarf. This celestial object, though similar in size to Earth, is about 200,000 times denser. This dense sphere will then cool down to about 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, 10 million degrees Celsius. In about 10 billion years, the white dwarf sun will crystallize, much like water turning into ice. But instead of water, it's carbon and oxygen that will solidify. Now stars over 10 times the mass of the sun have a different destiny. They're massive enough for their cores to collapse after a supernova, but not quite massive enough to become black holes. So what happens to them? Inside these stars, extreme pressure forces every proton and electron to merge, forming neutrons. Neutrons can't be compressed any further, so they resist gravitational pressure, and the star finds a new equilibrium. These neutron stars are the densest objects in the universe, second only to black holes. They can be as small as a city, about 12 miles, 20 kilometers across, but still have the mass of the sun. On Earth, a sugar cube-sized piece of neutron star material would weigh as much as a mountain, about 1 billion tons. But how do stars become black holes? As long as a star is active, nuclear fusion and intense gravity, created by the star's own mass, counterbalance each other. Once the fuel for nuclear fusion runs out, there's no force to resist gravity, and the star collapses in on itself, much like a building being demolished. Einstein theorized that anything could become a black hole if it had enough mass and was compressed within a certain radius. Black holes continue to grow throughout their lifespan, gobbling up any material that strays too close. As this happens, the region where gravity becomes so strong that nothing can escape expands, and the black hole consumes even more nearby material. It's like a sinkhole, but instead of ground collapsing, it's a gravitational sinkhole that accelerates as its event horizon grows. Normally, black holes have a limit to how fast they can expand. This is due to something called the Eddington Luminosity Limit. It's the point at which a black hole can't absorb material faster than it already does. Imagine filling a car tire with air and it has small holes in it. The increased pressure inside would force some of the excess air to escape. In space, a similar phenomenon happens with rotating black holes. About 42% of this matter can transform into energy. This energy is so potent, it can push some incoming material away, just like air being pushed out of a car tire. This process is so efficient that the energy it emits surpasses that from nuclear fusion in stars. Imagine a future where we could harness this energy for our needs. Even supermassive black holes which are at the heart of almost every galaxy, have this limit. Some of these black holes have recently been discovered to be much larger than we thought. This poses one of the greatest mysteries in astronomy. The gradual accumulation of matter over the universe's age doesn't explain their enormous size. 
but there might be something that could solve this mystery. Black hole stars or quasi-stars could have been the largest celestial bodies to ever exist, dwarfing even the most gigantic black holes we've discovered so far. In the early universe space was filled with massive gas clouds. Within these dense regions material collapsed under its own gravity giving rise to baby stars of extraordinary size. There's a theory that they may have originated from dark matter halos, invisible regions of dark matter where thousands of supermassive stars could form. Normally large stars would explode and leave behind massive black holes, but these celestial giants were so huge, they absorbed the explosive force that would otherwise blast the star's outer layers into space. Instead, these ancient stars experienced implosions, transforming their cores into tiny black holes while keeping the outer layers intact. Now imagine a baby black hole inside a quasi-star, eating it from the inside. This tiny spinning black hole creates a disk of hot material circling it at nearly the speed of light. The star's pressure sends gas straight into the black hole, making the host star glow like a small galaxy. Quasi-stars, if they existed, grew faster than any black hole we've observed. Eventually, some of them would outgrow the largest known stars and black holes like Stevenson II. 18 UI Scuti and Ton 618. These quasi-stars could be thousands of times larger than the Sun, potentially even the diameter of our solar system, and beyond. But this enormous size and mass come with a downside. The larger quasi-stars become the shorter their lifespan. Our Sun has been around for over 4 billion years, with approximately 6 billion years left. Black hole stars, on the other hand, lasted for just a few million years before exploding with unprecedented power, releasing a monstrous black hole ready to drift across space in search of more material to devour. But what if a star like this wandered into our peaceful celestial neighborhood? Once a quasi-star entered the solar system, its gravitational influence would disrupt the established orbits of planets and celestial bodies. The once orderly planetary system would be in chaos with Earth experiencing a severe asteroid rain, the effects would start before the quasi-star even arrived. The dynamic processes linked to quasi-stars like the collapse of their central black hole and interaction with surrounding matter could be powerful sources of gravitational waves. These waves might have played a role in shaping galaxies and the distribution of stars within them. But that's not all. Quasi-stars could have implications for astrobiology too. Their intense radiation might have influenced the habitability of nearby planets, potentially shaping life's conditions in surprising ways. In the grand scheme of cosmic evolution, quasi-stars might have shaped the early universe in ways we can't even imagine. Here's another mind-boggling thought. Although there are probably no quasi-stars in our universe today, tiny black holes from the dawn of time might still be around. These black holes roughly the mass of an asteroid could be drifting through space occasionally getting trapped within gas clouds. As new stars form these primordial black holes could find their way into the star's cores, even black holes the size of Pluto could grow enormously within just a few hundred million years, a blink of an eye in a star's life. So even our sun could harbor one, as the late great Stephen Hawking once suggested. If our sun hit a black hole as massive as Mercury, we wouldn't even notice it although it's very unlikely. But scientists think there might be a way to identify such cosmic containers for primordial black holes. Hawking stars, named after Stephen Hawking, would last much longer than typical stars. To cool off, Hawking stars expand into red giants, something our sun will do as it ages. But red giants with a tiny black hole inside would be a bit cooler than they normally are. Researchers have already detected about 500 unusually cool red giants. To find out whether these stars hide primordial black holes, scientists plan to observe the stars' unique vibrations as they pulsate. And here's another mind-bending thought. Some believe that the mysterious dark matter that pervades the universe is actually a swarm of countless, miniature primordial black holes. And while it's extremely unlikely that a black hole would end up captured by a star. Thanks for watching the video and comments in the video if you have any questions.